There's been some news about F1 Academy. And I can assure you, it's good news. And yes, we will actually get to see it during a race weekend. If you're not familiar with this feeder series, and I wouldn't blame you for not being familiar since the initial integration of this series was quite badly done, F1 Academy is an all-female series that is the evolution of the W series and is fully backed by Formula One management themselves to help give women in motorsport a chance for some TV time and hopefully shed some light on the idea of As long as you're fast, it don't matter. Get in the car, kiddo. I've been looking through videos about F1 Academy and they're either non-existent or they're mostly going on about, oh, Formula One Academy is a joke. I'm not gonna watch it, it's lame. They didn't take it seriously. And yes, in some elements, they do have a point. The initial execution of Formula One Academy's idea was a noble one in the wake of W Series demise due to the fact that it, well, ran out of money, but with Susie Wolf reimagining it with Formula One support, it was hopefully going to be something a little bit more streamlined, with additional support from legitimate junior category teams like Prema, MP, ART and Campos. But the problem is though, is that I don't think it was communicated properly that this initial season of the F1 Academy was meant to be a testing out period, a trial run. And then for the final race of the season in Austin, they can then run it in tangent with Formula One, since there's no Formula Two or Formula Three going on. But no, that wasn't telegraphed properly. And ultimately, we got the first race happening before we even realized it happened. And then we got a highlights video coming out, which was completely sapping of any sort of hype that I could possibly have for this series. I was left disappointed with the fact that we got this 20 minute highlights package and it contains three races, driver interviews and overall punditry. You can't make it 20 minutes long with that. It needs to be at least an hour. What's wrong with a live stream? But according to James Bradshaw, the head of digital tech at F1, the executives of the series were unwilling to fork out the money to do this for the entire season in regards to getting the right infrastructure in place. I can understand why they did that in a way. This is a brand new series and they are investing a lot of money into this, including subsidizing the drivers who are taking part and there are 15 of them. So it's a good few million squid going into this. So they want to make sure it's absolutely right. So that means if they go to the first race and they televise it alongside Formula One and it's all an absolute mess and it's a disaster, there are things going wrong and you get things like first name, last name. No, wait, that happened in the F1 broadcast with their new graphics. Yeah, you see, things can go wrong live. What's the lesser of two evils? Do you just want to get things sorted out in quiet and then people get a little bit disappointed? Or you want things to go wrong live in front of hundreds of millions of people and then people completely thinking it's an absolute joke and that it should never happen. This was a bit of a catch-22 situation, but still. I think the execution could have been a little bit better. But the thing about all this miscommunication is that people just assume that it was just a carbon copy of W Series, where it clearly isn't. For starters, these are F4-like machines, whereas W Series is F3-like machines. And that was already relatively mature by the time we got to see it in tandem with Formula One. But F1 Academy was completely brand new, even though Susie Wolf is attached to it and she was attached to W Series. There were just some things they need to sort it out first because this is a brand new initiative for Formula One doing its own series, but surely they could have had a YouTube live stream on their own YouTube channel to broadcast to the world for free as an experimental thing, because it's a trial series, so why should you get people to pay for it? But no, we didn't get that. Not even a live stream broadcast. We got a highlights package, usually about two, three weeks after the race itself, and that just killed any sort of hype that I could possibly have or anyone else. Sure. It did decent numbers, but nowhere near as good as what even F3 races get. But again, a highlights package doesn't sound so bad. But the thing is, though, it was so jam packed with content that usually the races lasted maybe about three or four minutes. And granted, there are only 15 cars on track, but you don't need to have a gajillion cars on track to make it interesting. Sometimes if you just got a bunch of cars that are vying for the lead, that might be good enough to satisfy you for a whole race. But again, we barely got any chance to get immersed in the experience of seeing these cars racing. By the time you're even getting used to it, the race is already over and then they're talking about the punditry and then see you at the next race, wherever that may be or whenever. Yeah, but I think it's quite safe to say that that first season of F1 Academy was definitely a trial run. It was a test season to get things sorted out. And immediately when they announced the 2024 thing with having F1 teams repping, I was thinking, OK, this seems a bit more solid. They mean business. But I still wish that Susie Wolf telegraphed it more cleanly that 
Austin would be the only televised thing, and then the rest of it is just to try and sort things out in the background, in quiet, in privacy. But thankfully, the next season will address all of that. The past season is, well, in the past, and now the series has proper FIA backing. With the F1 Academy now established to be a proper support series for 2024, we got some cool additions which will not only make this series a legitimate means to get into bigger series, but also provide other female drivers a little bit of a flash in the pan experience of the whole thing, without necessarily having to fork out the entire entry fee in which to participate for just a single race, with 150,000 being subsidized by F1 Academy itself, 150,000 from the drivers or sponsors themselves, and then the rest being covered by the team that they are racing for. But according to one source, if a driver then gets selected to represent a major Formula One team, so for example, 10 of the 15 races, they, the team, pay out for the whole thing, for the whole widget, 600,000 euros. But then again, this is coming from the likes of Business F1, the people that had the Toto, Susie, Wolf, Pillow talk thing. So if I were you, I would take that with a whole factory's worth of salt. Ideally, one from inside the factory presented by Greg Wallace. Way! From 2024, the top five drivers will get super license points, with 10 going to the champion and one going to fifth place driver which puts it at about similar to what the champion would get from the European Le Mans LMP2 class or British Formula 3's champion, which is now known as GB3 because the FIA got a little bit shirty when it comes to other series saying that they're Formula 3 and that completely detracting from the international FIA F3 championship. So now there aren't any other F3 championships. They are now known by something else, like in this case, GB3, which at one point was British Formula 4. That was really weird. This isn't terrible and quite quick to acquire these points too in their second season as W Series got as well in their second season, the champion getting 15 points there. And that series used F3 like cars. So the disparity isn't all that major. It's pretty much in line with what you would expect with that caliber of machinery. So, okay, cool. It's a nice little earner. But the surprises don't stop there. Then there's the idea of the wild card entry that the current team champions, in this case, Prema, can run a fourth car for certain rounds with that being given to a totally new driver from that region no less so this isn't just a random driver from a european country they get everything provided for them and they can score points toward the overall championship so it's not like they get to run around the track for a while and have no contribution to the overall standings their participation be it good or whatever could impact the overall championship as well it's certainly a little bit more of a well wild card and again, what's more important here is that these drivers are selected in the region that they are racing in. And considering that the vast majority of the races are taking place at non-European tracks, this could be a huge boon for female drivers in the Middle Eastern region to get a bit of a showcase in their own vague territory. I think this is an absolute win, because if this was going to be just another random European driver driving for Prema, it's like, yeah, that's all well and good, but we maybe need a little bit more showcasing from different regions across the world, which is... I think a good idea, with the hope of joining the following season, as we're now going to see a set limit of two seasons per driver. So that means a fair few people on the grid currently will then have to move on for the 2025 Academy season, when we would then get a bunch of new drivers, the conveyor belt continues, and then hopefully we can get a steady, consistent churn of female drivers entering the system. Now is that fair though? Well, I think it is, because the whole point of F1 Academy is meant to be a place of learning. It's not just yet another championship for people to score super license points in. This is a place for brand new drivers to learn with established teams who have kit that is tried and tested in the likes of Formula 4. And that is something that these female drivers really need time in because the accessibility is relatively limited. And also having the idea that you get two seasons instead of just staying for as long as the sponsors will allow you to will prevent a situation where we get the likes of Jamie Chadwick winning every single season of W Series there was. Now, no disrespect to Jamie Chadwick there. She was racing and there was competition and she was the best. But I bet the whole point of W Series was there to showcase female talent and give them a look in. All that conveyed to me was that Jamie Chadwick was the only good one. I think W Series kind of dropped the ball on that front. Now, another thing that I thought was a really cool idea was that the 10 existing F1 teams are going to have their colors painted on 10 of the 15 cars, with the remaining five drivers being supported by other partners. And in the case of one other driver, Emily De Hoist, being represented by Red Bull, the company, instead of Red Bull Racing or VCarb. Again, it's not entirely clear how much backing the Formula One teams are going to be giving these drivers and the F1 Academy initiative. It could be a lot. It could be barely anything than just a lick of paint and a pat on the back from the team principal saying, good luck there. 
fun if it's anything like what McLaren are doing, where they're fully integrating their F1 Academy representative into all of their social media and basically making Bianca Bustamante a part of their crew. That's quite positive. They're being showcased as part of the McLaren family and community. So here's hoping that the other Formula One teams big up their drivers. And I think Williams are doing a good job with Leah Block, the daughter of Ken Block. Yes, that Ken Block. And apparently this is her first time in single seater operations, having had a decent time of it in American rallying and a little bit of Extreme E. I think this was a good coup from Williams that they're actually doing their bit in representing American talent. And again, the most important thing I think F1 Academy has got over W Series is that it's got backing from existing teams that are very well versed with training up junior drivers. You've got Roden, which used to be Carlin. You've got MP Motorsport. You've got ART. You've got Campos. You've got Prima, one of the best teams out there, and is going to be hosting the likes of Kimi Antonelli for Formula 2 this year alongside Oli Behrman. They know what they're doing when it comes to this operation. So I think they can offer a thing or two for these academy drivers with proper teams that can then give them a leg up into other sporting categories. Because I believe the champion at F1 Academy last year, I think she's now racing in Formula Regional. So anyway, let me talk to you about the 10 drivers being represented by F1 teams. I've already talked to you about Leah Block, who's representing Williams, and Bianca Bustamante, who's representing McLaren. But Bustamante has had experience in W Series before as being part of the Academy team alongside Juju Noda. Now, the idea of the Academy team in W Series was a really good one. A place where two drivers could have two seasons with that team, having everything paid for them and subsidized, a crew for them, they get to learn the ropes of motorsport with a whole team and crew behind them, and then they can see where they go. It didn't matter if they didn't score any points, they were just there to race and learn what motorsport was all about, away from all of the other teams and drivers. If they score points alongside them, then great. If not, doesn't matter. They get two seasons, no pressure. I think that idea of that academy team has been evolved into an entire series. Then there's Tina Hulsman, 17. A Swiss driver will be representing Aston Martin and has cut her teeth mostly in karting in Switzerland and getting some experience in the Italian F4 championship with the highest result of being 16th. Now I have to remind you, my friend, again, this is an academy. You're not going to be getting the best of the best of the best here. You're going to be getting a mixture of different drivers at different stages of their motorsport career. Some people will be brand new to this. They'll be relatively inexperienced. You might get some more experienced people, as we'll be talking about in a bit. But the point is, is that they have been given a chance in this particular category by this particular Formula One team to then see what they can do. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, they at least had a chance, which is better than could be said maybe a few years ago. So I implore you, don't go looking to their statistics on Wikipedia and go, oh, they haven't won anything, they're rubbish. They are not here just to race blindly, they are here to learn. But having said that, Mercedes really did go all out with picking Dorian Pin to represent them in F1 Academy. Her opening resume contains titles in the Ferrari Challenge Europe series and quite a reasonable WEC sheet with Prima in LMP2 and currently repping Iron Dames in LMGT3 for this year alongside F1 Academy. She's even in the official Mercedes Junior team from 2024, so... Yeah, she is fairly impressive. And oh yes, she's got a Spa 24 Hours trophy from 2022. Not bad. Ferrari's pick is Maya Voig, who's had a couple of titles in karting, including with WSK, and several points finishes with Iron Dames in Italian F4 in 2022, as well as some in last year's Formula Regional Series, and earned her place as being the first woman in Ferrari's Driver Academy, fending off a shootout with the likes of Dorian Pin, who ended up with Mercedes. Haas then had the likes of Chloe Chambers. You might recognize that name from W Series, where she was the teammate of Jamie Chadwick at Jenna Racing for 2022. She also had a decent showing in the Oceana Formula Regional Series, getting a win at Taupo, New Zealand, near the end of the season. And she's bagged several wins in Porsche Sprint Series as well. Carrie Schreiner represents Sauber and is the oldest driver so far at the age of 25, and has bagged some big finishes in endurance racing, including one in Lamborghini's Pro-Am Series for the Middle East region, as well as being in F1 Academy for its opening series, and also a win in a class at the 24 Hours of Nürburgring. So, you know, that's, that's good going there. Then we've got the Al Kubaisi sisters, who are the other Red Bull bad drivers, with Amna racing in V Cup colors and Hamda for Red Bull Racing. Hamda's been doing her bit for Abu Dhabi, racing in Italian Formula 4 for a few years, as well as getting several wins in the United Arab Emirates F4 series, as well as coming third in F1 Academy last year as her older sister finished sixth in that title last year. Then to wrap things up, we've got the likes of Abby Pulling representing Alpine. 
Now, you might recognize that name from W Series too. She's also had some podiums in British Formula 4, and again, two seasons in W Series, and finished fifth in F1 Academy last year. So what I like the looks of is that we've got a mixture of more experienced drivers and less experienced drivers. And that means we can see where the overlap might come. We might get some blindingly good racing. We might just get people just pottering at the back, understanding the craft to then go into their second season and then hopefully be able to apply themselves more and more. We should really not expect people to hit the ground running almost immediately. This is the place for learning. And what I've seen with these added rule changes and extra points to be had and extra perks, the wild card, it really feels like Formula One Academy has gotten into its stride and hopefully it can get over all of the shortfalls and lack of communication and understanding about what the makeup and the composition would be for 2023. And now hopefully we will just see F1 Academy as a legit support series going to all of the races that they expect to, seven races over the course of the F1 2024 season. And hopefully the Formula One teams will integrate the drivers they have picked like McLaren did with Bianca. Let's hope that. But you might notice that one driver is missing from this list. Why isn't Juju Noda in F1 Academy? She's going to be busy in Super Formula racing for DGM which also hosts F2 drivers Ayumu Iwasa and F2's champion for 2023, Teo Porcher. To find out how Juju Noda got that plum in Super Formula, go and watch this video next as to the background of what she'd been up to after W Series folded.